2022 was the first registration for the Haemophilia A gene therapy and early 2023 was the first registration for Haemophilia B uh, gene therapy. And Haemophilia, they both are AAV gene therapy, so adeno-associated virus, where the, the gene therapy is using the properties of a virus to enter a cell without actually destroying it. And then instead of delivering the virus's DNA, they actually deliver the DNA of the defective gene. What we have seen now that uh, there are two uh, phase three trials completed in the Haemophilia A trial and in the Haemophilia B trial, most patients had successful expression uh, leading to them uh, to, to, to stop discontinue prophylaxis and most of them have remained off prophylaxis. Uh, we are seeing some differences in Haemophilia A. There is a distinct peak in the factor expression somewhere between six and 12 months after the dosing of gene therapy and thereafter there is a certain gradual decline and I think most fear that at some point the gene therapy will be lost. Contrary to that is actually the Haemophilia B gene therapy where we've seen very stable expressions in the, the product that has been licensed now but also in a front runner pro uh, 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 product that is now over 10 years of follow-up with extreme stable factor 9 expression and honestly we are not really really sure what is the driver of that differences. Could it be disease related? Could it be product related? But there are distinct differences. I think the commonality is that most people are able to discontinue prophylaxis, that they get a severe or a, quite an improvement in their bleeding phenotype, but there are distinct differences between the two.